Hey crafty friends, it's Chelsea, and today I am bringing you another creative design team video. This month we are talking all about how to use those busy pattern papers. You know the ones, the ones that can easily steal the show on your projects. For my layout today, I decided to use this Deck the Palms collection. So as you can see, there is a lot of busy patterns in this pack. I actually had a hard time deciding which one I wanted to use. I'm going to end up going with this top one here with all those really cute little icons. And now for my secret weapon when dealing with busy papers, it's 12 by 12 vellum. I love how when you lay it over top, it just instantly softens or mutes the pattern a little bit and makes it a little bit less busy. A paper can read as busy if it has really large patterns, if it has contrasting colors, and sometimes even if it just is really bright. So a sheet of vellum is definitely my quick fix for dealing with any of these kinds of papers. Now that I've chosen my paper, I'm just gonna get out my trimmer here and cut off that zip strip, that top branding strip. And as I flip it over, you can see that the back is actually a Christmas paper. So the Deck the Palms collection has tropical on one side and tropical Christmas on the other side. Definitely a unique take on Christmas paper. Now I'm just laying my vellum over top and trying to figure out where I want to rip it, how far up I want to rip it. I thought by ripping the bottom that would give me an, an interesting edge and also a section of the paper so that we can still see the full brightness of the pattern without the vellum over top. Another option would be to trim your vellum down to like 11 by 11 inches or so and that way you could see the bright pattern all around the outside edges. I wanted to go back and just fix that rip a little bit. It ended up a little bit more swoopy than what I wanted, so I went back and fixed it. I also decided just to rip a very little bit off of the top. I like the way that rip edge looked, and I thought to have a nice little strip at the top of the paper showing would be good too. As I'm ripping with my right hand, I'm using my left to make sure that my rips don't get away from me and kind of keep it right along that about half inch or so. Uh, otherwise, you can see on the bottom, the vellum just kind of rips wherever it wants to. I'm matting this four by six photo with four and a quarter by six and a quarter inch white cardstock. And then I thought, you know, a little bit of color around the photo would be nice. So I'm going to cut this pink star pattern paper from the collection just an eighth of an inch bigger. So I have a very slim mat around my photo of this bright pink. So this pink paper ends up being four and three eighths by six and five eighths. I'm going to have a two part title on this page. Uh, both of the fonts that I'm using, I've purchased from Creative Fabrica and I will list them down in the description box in case you're interested. So in Cricut Design Space, I typed out the word Aloha. I selected the font that I wanted. I knew I wanted some kind of scripty font and I liked the look of this handwritten one. And I welded my letters together and then I used the offset feature to make a shadow. If you have not used that offset feature yet, you really need to. It is awesome, it is one of my favorite things to do. Now that my photo and photo mats are all stuck together, I am now going to line it up and put it onto the vellum. So I have the vellum just sitting on top of my pattern paper where I think I want it. And then I'm using that top part of the title there to make sure that it's down far enough. And now that I have that in place, I'm going to use that spot behind the photo to put my adhesive. This is the only adhesive that is holding that piece of vellum onto the background pattern paper. Because the vellum is transparent, if I put tape anywhere else, you will see it. So now comes the flower making part of this layout. I'm using the inks that coordinate with my cardstock. So I have ballerina, nectarine, and raspberry. I love how close to my heart has a coordinating color palette. So the colors that are in the pattern paper come in cardstock, come in ink colors, and it just makes designing pages super simple. 
Here I'm taking a sponge dauber and I'm just applying the nectarine ink to the center of the nectarine cardstock hibiscus flower, going in circles. I started in the center where I wanted it the darkest and then just blend it outwards so that it kind of fades off. I'm going to repeat this step with all of the hibiscus flowers and I'm just doing it to the top layer. So here I have the ballerina ink on the ballerina cardstock. Again, starting in the center where I want it the darkest and blending it outwards. The yellow cardstock that you're seeing on some of the flowers is lemonade. And then those green leaves up there at the top are cut from clover cardstock. For this little plumeria flower, it is cut on white. And I'm just using a little bit of ballerina ink right in the center and kind of keeping it towards that middle. I didn't want to go right out to the edges. Lots of times when I am blending with ink, I like to use my Tim Holtz mini ink blender, but for little projects like this, those fingertip daubers are perfect. They're small enough to let you get in those little areas and kind of give you a little bit more control. Now that I have those inked, I'm gonna grab my black journaling pen and I'm just gonna add a bunch of little random dots, making them closer together at the very inside of the flower and then getting more sparse as you go outwards. When I make my own paper flowers, I really like to do just what feels good to me. Sometimes I will bring up reference photos and look at them and try and copy somewhat what the real flowers look like. And sometimes I just wanna run with what I wanna do, whether it's correct to actual flowers or not. As long as it looks pretty to me, that's really all I go by. So if there's any florists or gardeners watching this and you're cringing as you watch me do this, don't come for me in the comments, okay? <sighs> It's artistic license. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. As I'm working away here, you may be wondering what that black mat is. It's actually the back side of my Versa mat. It's spongy, kind of like a mouse pad, and you'll see why that's important in just a couple minutes. Now that I'm done with the details on my flowers, I'm going to take my Tombow glue and just stick all of my layers together. So I'm gonna start with the largest layer, put that over top of the background, and then I'm just going to attach the stamen. These are really easy flowers to put together, not complicated at all. You can put glue all the way down the stamens if you want to, or you can just put it right at the base. I did a combination of both. Uh, really all it needs is a little bit at the base to keep it attached. If you're interested in what Cricut cuts I used for this, I will list them down in the description box for you as well. I'm going to finish up adhering these last couple of flowers off camera, and then I wanna show you the plumeria. So this one, there's only one right way for that top layer to go on, and you really wanna figure out which way that is before you get glue on the back. And I would recommend to use a very light hand when applying the glue. It is a very narrow little band, so I just used tiny little dots and I made sure I kept it straight which was the top, which way it had to go on there. So I wasn't trying to figure that out while I had glue on the die cut. Now I'm going to move on to giving my leaves and my flowers some shape. This is the part that's important to have some kind of spongy, foamy surface. You can see here that I'm actually using the end of my Cricut spatula to press down on the edges of this leaf and then press down more as I go towards the center. That's on the underside. And then I flipped it over to the top and pushed down just right in the middle. So you can see I got a little bit of a cup and then the edges of the leaves are bending downwards. Now you would think the amount that I make paper flowers that I would own a set of like flower shaping tools. Basically those look like embossing styluses, except they have like bigger round ends on them in like different sizes and they look really awesome. I've never owned any. If you have some that you really love, please leave them in the comments because I really think it's something I need to invest in. You can see with this plumeria, I added just a little bit of cupping to it by pressing down the spatula right in the center and a little bit on the petals from the top side. I'm basically gonna do the same thing on all my flowers, press in the middle and then press uh, out towards the edges of the petals on the top side of the flower. Now, could you skip this step? 
yes, you totally could. This isn't like earth shattering. It's not making or breaking the die cuts, but personally, just that subtle bit of texture and so that it's not completely flat. It has that little bit of shape. It gets a few wrinkles in it from pressing the spatula. I just feel like it makes a more realistic looking flower. Now, if you have any kind of hand or wrist issues, maybe you have arthritis or like weakness in your hands, you may want to skip this step because it did take a little bit of effort and strength to do this. Honestly, it's pretty much like a full upper body workout, so you can just skip the gym the day that you make your flowers. Here's a close-up look at those flowers and leaves. I just love how they turned out. Back to the layout now. I'm going to put that second part of the title down. Uh, some of these pieces are connected and some aren't. There's definitely a lot more loose letters and numbers than I had for my top title. So I'm going to lay them out, use a piece of washi tape to pick them up and flip them over. And then I'm going to use glue to just add little dots of adhesive all over them. This is a really fast way to do a whole bunch and also make sure that you get them back onto your page nice and straight. I don't know about you guys, but do you ever forget some of these hacks that help you make crafting easier? I know I've done this in the past, but now I'm wondering why I don't do it all of the time. It's so much faster. Just want to be careful when you're peeling that washi tape off, go slowly and kind of at an angle. Uh, depending how sticky your tape is, if you go really quickly, you might end up ripping something. Now all I have to do is straighten out that one little two that went slightly off kilter and then stick on the dot for the eye and that part is done. This little white strip has the dates of the trip on it and I actually used the same font that I used for the Aloha. Just went into my word processor, typed it out and then cut it down into this strip. As I'm starting to arrange my floral clusters, you can see that I also have another style of leaves. These ones, I didn't do any shaping to. I just left them the way they were, and they are cut from green apple cardstock. Now, as I start pulling out all these flowers, you're probably wondering, hey, where did all these things come from? You didn't make all these on camera. No, I didn't. I wanted to save a little bit of time and it was very repetitive. So basically I just created more of the flowers that I already showed you, some in different sizes. Uh, when I'm building my clusters, I want to have some variety in the leaves. I want to have variety in color in my flowers and in sizes. I debated adding some journaling to this page over on the right hand side, but instead I went with this little tag cut from toffee cardstock using the buildable tags thin cuts. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of some brown twine that I had in my stash. And I'm just gonna loop it through the little slot in the tag and then tuck it under my photo mat. If you did wanna add some journaling, this would be a perfect spot. You could even fit a larger journaling spot there, maybe even like half a circle or something like that. But this is gonna be the title page of an album. So I figured the rest of the journaling can come on my other pages. Next, I'm going to start to adhere my clusters down. I'm just trimming off the ends of the leaves if they're sticking out and figuring out how I want everything so it looks balanced. Usually odd numbers look the most appealing, uh, but sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. It just depends on the page and on the cluster. On the two largest clusters, I'm going to have nine elements. And then on the smaller cluster on the right hand side, I'm going to have five elements. So even though there's only two flowers, that tag is actually taking the spot of a third flower. This isn't something I always consciously think about. I don't always like count up all my elements and make sure I have an odd number. I've been doing it long enough. So I just kind of look and see if it looks right to me or if it looks full enough. And also if it fits in the space that I want to use for it. I originally wasn't sure if I wanted to do this bottom cluster of flowers because it's kind of overlapping where the vellum and the pattern paper meet. I thought it might take away from the impact of that change from the vellum to the pattern paper, 
but after looking at it, I really liked the design of having sort of a triangle on my page. So I'm really wide up at the top and then it kind of tapers down in a triangle shape. I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to some of these flowers. So I'm using the thin foam dots. Um, I like those a little bit better for layouts because then I don't get quite as much bulk and it will still fit in my album. Most of these items are all getting glued down. So like all the leaves are glued and just the odd flower is popped and also that aloha word is pop dotted as well. If clustering die cuts is something a little bit newer to you or you feel intimidated by it, I would encourage you to just give it a try and maybe start smaller. There's a lot going on in this page and some pretty large size clusters. Even if you make cards, make a card with one small cluster on it and then you don't have to worry about balancing it out and making sure that your eye travels across the page and all those kind of design things that we think about on scrapbook pages. It's like any skill. The more you do it, the better you get at it. If you're a big fan of techniques, you're going to want to make sure you come back for the creative design team's big announcement in March. We are so excited about what we have coming up for you all. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the big announcement. And also, while you're at it, hit that like button if you're enjoying this video. Now I'm sure you're probably starting to wonder, how much longer am I going to be sticking down all these die cuts? You guys, these clusters, they take so much time for me to assemble. Maybe I'm just too picky. I don't know. If you saw all the fussing around that I cut out, it probably like an extra half an hour. So I promise I'm trying to make it quick for you guys, but also show you my process. So in case you enjoy that and you want to see how I assemble everything so that you can try it out yourself, I want to include some of that for you. I felt like this page needed a little bit of bling. So I took my sparkles and my bitty sparkles and I am just scattering them around all my floral clusters. Not too much of a rhyme or reason. I like to put a larger sparkle with a mini sparkle and just kind of alternate around, sometimes groups of two, sometimes groups of three, and basically just put them in little triangles and then sometimes a single sparkle by itself. So it kind of looks like they randomly just fell onto the page. For those of you that have stuck around to this part of the video, thank you. And as a reward for that, I have a special vellum tip I want to share. Now, I would like to say that I planned it this way, but honestly, I got to the end of my page and I'm like, you know what? I want that pattern paper to look even softer. So the farther away the vellum is from the base page, the more it's going to soften and kind of blur out that pattern. You can see as I lift it here, that it farther away it gets, the softer the pattern underneath appears, the more frosted it kind of looks. Now I could have probably peeled up the whole vellum sheet uh, because it's only stuck down where the photo is and I could have put foam tape underneath the photo which would have given me lots of height and would have worked great. I decided to not do that and just take some foam dots and put them around under my floral clusters and a couple under that top Aloha title just to lift it a little bit. After those foam dots are put into place, I'm just going around with my tweezers to help me pull off the covering on the foam dots, especially for those areas that are really far in there. The ones that are closer out to the edge, I can reach with my fingers. If I had ended up putting foam tape under where the photo is, I think I still would have wanted to add some foam dots or foam tape under where the florals are just so that it had some support and it wouldn't be sagging down from the weight of them. One of my other favorite ways to soften a very busy pattern paper is to use gesso and go a little bit more mixed media. If you think that's something you'd be interested in, please leave me a comment and I'd be happy to make a second video showing you that technique. Here is a close up of the page. So hopefully you can see a little bit better all the texture and all the interest of those florals, how the vellum looks, and then all those little sparkles in there. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Here's some close-up photos for you. 
make sure that you check out all the other creative design team videos. Most of them have already gone up. Julie's is coming up tomorrow, so make sure you check that out. And I will link the whole playlist down in the description box. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.